Hello, my name is Allison Carmen, and welcome to my podcast, 10 Minutes to Less Suffering. And the name of today's podcast is to want something that no longer exists. And I've been thinking a lot about this lately because over the holidays, I wasn't feeling well and I missed some holiday celebrations. And during that time, my ex-husband came to town with his young pregnant wife and they were looking for summer rentals in a place that we used to enjoy summer vacations. And as I was lying in bed, missing all these great events and feeling sick, I started to look at him being in town and probably in a very celebratory mood. And I watched myself. I watched the fact that I had a choice in that moment where to go. And for a little bit, I started to feel down. And then I caught myself. I caught myself because I realized I truly had a choice that this was not my life anymore, that it was my past. And where was I going to put my intention for 2024? Was I going to put it on a life I no longer had? Was I going to put it on a summer rental I no longer had? Was I going to put it on something that was outside of me, outside my control? Or was I going to make a different choice? Was I going to choose my intentions for 2024? my goals, my resolutions? Was I going to rest? Was I going to speak to some friends? Was I going to reset and call it all back to me so I had the strength and resolve to have a good year in 2024? And of course, that's what I decided to do. But it is so easy to not see that moment when we choose the past, when we choose what we don't have, when we choose to abandon ourselves in that moment where we need ourselves the most, in that moment where we are building something beautiful and wonderful, that instead we knock it down because of something in the outside world that doesn't exactly look like we thought it was going to. I thought I was going to go to twice the holiday parties, although I did make some. I thought I was going to be out with my girls. I thought it was going to be a very social week. And there I was in bed on antibiotic, not feeling great and looking at the outside world with other people doing things that I used to do or having a life I used to have. It's a really fascinating moment because if we choose to not go back to ourselves, if we choose to feel more depleted than we do, if we choose to give our power to something that is so outside of us, then that's how we start the year. And it feels so awful and out of control to want something that no longer exists. So it was a really interesting moment. And it actually made me dig deeper into my intentions, dig deeper into my goals, dig deeper into me and what I want and my love for myself. It upped my self-care. It upped my will to get better where I hadn't been there for myself as much as I could have been in 2023, it was really a reset, a deeper commitment to what I wanted and how I could love myself and how I could show up. And so as we look at this new year, as we look at what we want, it's so important that we look where we put our attention. It is very easy to get distracted by world events. It's very easy to get distracted by things other people have, by past hurts, but it's much more juicy and loving and kind and productive to realize that all of these things are beyond us. They're out of our control. It's like trying to stop a river from flowing. And instead we have that choice in that moment to hold on to ourselves, to hug ourselves tighter to go within, to deepen our commitment to ourselves, deepen our love, deepen our goals, deepen what we want and let the river flow and flow with it and let life take us in the direction that it's already going. And sure, we can make changes and sure, we have choices, but often resisting what is happening in the moment, we're just harming ourselves. 
and we're not truly appreciating all that's being offered to us in the moment. So how can we do this? How can we realize when our mind is going more to the outside, when we are losing our sense, losing our way, thinking about what other people have? And one of the biggest indicators is when we start to feel really bad about ourselves and bad about our lives. When we stop believing in our dreams and we just feel like we cannot have the life that we want, we cannot be the person that we want to be. When these feelings come up, this is the moment where we have to ask ourselves, where is this coming from? Because that's the moment where we're either going to love ourselves more or abandon ourselves to something that is really beyond us. And that's what happened to me at that moment. So when we ask ourselves, where am I right now? What is the prevailing thought? What is the thought that's causing my suffering and my pain? And often it's because we believe that someone has something that we can't have. But it's our job at that moment to look at it and say, what do I need that I don't have? It's usually not what that person has. It's usually a feeling of lack within ourselves. And when we give ourselves that love and we give ourselves that belief and that direction, we get to begin again. We get to believe that because life is uncertain, we have the opportunity to create new possibilities in our lives. So we turn it from looking at what that person has and feeling of lack to filling ourselves up and giving ourselves the love we need to pursue our goals. When we start thinking about the past and what we no longer have, we have to ask ourselves, are these things we still want or is there just space within us to create something new? How can we look at the past and thank it but also be present in the moment and understand the glory of the moment, understand the blessings of the moment and understand our ability in this moment to create the life that we want. It's such a small line sometimes between sinking into what we don't have or becoming the creator of a new life. And I so get this, but we really need to constantly ask ourselves what is best for us Not holding on to what we don't have, not holding on to the old, not writing stories that other people have more than we do, but writing our own story for our own lives, going back to us, setting our intentions, setting our dreams, and knowing because the future is unknown, everything is possible. We have so much more within us than we even know. In a way, it's our job just to keep becoming more of who we actually already are. That's the most amazing thing. It's not like new things happen that we become different. It's already in us. And it's about this deep commitment about keep going back to ourselves and going deeper and letting go of the fear and choosing ourselves and choosing love and choosing our dreams and choosing meaning. We go deeper and deeper And we grow and we become fuller and fuller. And then the outside world reflects who we truly are. And that's what happened to me that day. As I went back to me, I realized that that life is past. I don't resent it. I don't hate it. But it's not where I am. And I want to be in this moment. I want to be the creator of my huge destiny I want to be the creator of new ideas, the creator of new relationships, and I bet you do too. So really investigate these feelings when we're thinking more about the outside world than the inside world. You can do this. You can choose not to abandon yourself. And instead, when you have these feelings, embrace yourself even more. You deserve the love You deserve your dreams. You deserve to pursue them. And it's all there for you within you, just waiting for you to look within and know that you never go without. You could achieve your dreams and your goals this year. And it's our job to stay steady. And it's our job to stay focused on ourselves. And again, when these feelings come up of lack, of less, of not having, of other people, of outside events, bring it back home because you will find that there is an abundance of love and wisdom and direction and juice and meaning and joy already within you just waiting for you to return home and to hold in your heart that maybe the best is yet to come.
Thank you for listening to this podcast today. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you could email me at allison at allisoncarmen.com. If you'd like to buy my books, The Gift of Maybe or Year Without Men, they're available at all major bookstores and online retailers. And if you'd like to listen to the audiobook of The Gift of Maybe, it's available on all major audio platforms. And if you like this podcast, I hope you subscribe and leave a comment.